Now it's really time to put this hyper smooth to test. Let's see how well the Hypersmooth handles vibrations. GoPro recently discontinued the session. Why GoPro? Why? The session was a perfect FPV HD camera. It was small, light, centered lens. It was easy to mount. It was a perfect FPV camera. Now we're stuck with this thing. 2 inch touchscreen LCD, 4K shooting, hyper smooth. Maybe it won't be so bad. In this video, I'll be comparing these two cameras. This is the GoPro Hero 7 black versus white. I'm gonna skip the silver because the silver, all it does is pretty much the same as the white except it adds 4K video at 30 frames per second and adds GPS and adds like a hundred bucks onto the price tag. There are tons of tech reviews that go super in detail with these cameras, but I'm gonna gear this video specifically for FPV uh, flying, freestyle and racing. I won't go super in detail on this review, I'll just focus on the features that you'll actually use on a quad. So features like 24p frame rates or external mic inputs, I'm gonna skip because you'll never use that on a quad. At the time of this review, the black goes for about $400 and the white is about $200. Obviously, the black is a better camera, but things get tricky when you strap these on a FPV quad because they take so much abuse. So let's see if the black is worth twice the money as the white. So size wise, they're very similar. Both are 62 millimeters wide, 45 millimeters high, but the, the black is roughly five millimeters uh, deeper than the white because the lens, I guess, sticks out more. And it weighs about 24 grams more than the white. It's 116 on the black and 92 on the white. Both are waterproof without the need for an external case. They have two inch touchscreen LCDs and voice control. That's pretty much it for the similarities. The black has a front LCD, which the white doesn't. Both cameras can shoot HD, but the max resolution on the white is 1440 at 16 frames per second, but the black can go up to 4K with tons more video formats. Formats such as 24p, 60, 30, 240 frames per second at 1080p. One thing I found annoying about the white is that it doesn't really do 1080p. It shoots only in one format. 1440p at 60 frames per second. 1440p format is more of a square than the 1080p widescreen that we're used to. So to get the regular wide HD format, you'll need to crop the top and bottom off the 1440 to get the 1080p widescreen. So we'll see what that looks like once we get some footage and uh, start editing. The touchscreen on the GoPro Hero 7s are pretty intuitive and pretty responsive so far. Slide down to get to the menus and then uh, slide up to view your media, but I don't have anything on here right now. And then slide left or right to go into the different shooting modes. So if you go left, it'll go in the time lapse. Middle is the camera. And then right is photo. So go there. And then to change the settings, you just go here and then select whatever you want. One thing that really interests me is the new stabilization feature, Hyper Smooth, on the black version. Let's go to the track and then find out, see how well it works. So we're at the park now and I'm basically going to run three tests on the GoPro black versus the white. First test is I'm going to run both cameras at their highest picture setting, which is on the white it is 10, uh, 1440 at 60 frames per second. And then on the black I'm going to run it at 4K 60 frames a second. And then for the second test, I'm going to test the uh, stabilization. So I'm going to set the GoPro black on 1080 at 60 frames per second with stabilization off. And then with the GoPro white at 1440 at uh, 60 frames per second with the standard um, stabilization. And then we'll turn on the hyper smooth on the black. And then we'll see if the hyper smooth is as good as they say it is. So this is the rig that I'll be testing the GoPros on. Originally, I was going to fly my Proton with the F60 V2s, except I just remember I took it apart for some photos, so it's not available. So I'm going to fly it on my Neutron. 
By the way, if you hear a lot of buzzing sound, there's a RC gas boat race going on right over there that's making all that sound. It sounds crazy. I'm gonna go check it out later. But anyways, my Proton is running the T-Motor F40 Pro V2 1750. It's gonna be running 6S and I'm gonna run it on this bad boy, the AC uh, 1300 6S. And then I'm running the Emax Mini Mag 2 stack with a TBS Unify V3, um, Axie Stubby, uh, Nano Crossfire, uh, Foxer Aero Pro, and then the Gym Fan 5149 props. These are my favorite props right now. These are awesome. And then I got a custom uh, mount that's holding two GoPros on here. It's really not designed to hold two GoPros because if you look closely, you can see how close these props are to the bottom of this mount. So that's probably gonna make a lot of crazy noise when we fly. But so just ignore the video, uh, the audio and just, we're just gonna be checking out the, the, the video. The first test black is shooting 4K 60 frames per second with the stabilization off and the white is shooting 1440p at 60 frames per second. As you can see the 1440p on the white is more square than wide. I cropped the video to 16.9 to make it easier to compare. All the GoPro footage is straight off the card. The only editing done to the videos were crop the 1440 to 16.9. So you can see the colors on the black are more accurate. It also does a better job at the exposure, especially when you're flying into the sun. The white has a hard time nailing the exposure as you can see the image getting darker and lighter. The overall smoothness, color, and sharpness on the black is better. I'll mention again that the white only shoots in one format, 1440p at 60, 60 frames per second. So every comparison you see on the white will be in that setting. Test number two, the black is shooting in 1080p 60 frames per second with stabilization off. When the cameras are shooting at a closer resolution to 1080 on the black and 1440 on the white, the image looks more similar, almost identical at times. But when the camera is facing the sun, the black still edges out the white in picture quality. The white image looks darker and slightly grainy while the black has more accurate colors. Also in this test the stabilization on the black is off while the stabilization on the white is always turned on. In test number 3 with the hypersmooth turned on you can really start to tell a difference in the vibrations on the image. You can see when I wiggle the roll stick, you can see the motion in the white, but the black seems to cancel out some of the movements. The overall image on the black looks smoother, while on the white, although it's not bad, you can still see micro vibrations. By the way, Hypersmooth is not available in 4K, only in 2.7K and below. So maybe the optimal setting for the black is 2.7K, 60 frames per second with the hypersmooth turned on. Now it's really time to put this hypersmooth to test. Let's see how well the hypersmooth handles vibrations. In test number 4, with about a half inch cut off the tip of the prop, the white is starting to show more micro vibrations in jello, while the black still looks super smooth. So this little bit of prop that I clipped off didn't seem to make much difference well, according to my uh, feed here. Um, so I'm going to clip off some more and then uh, see what happens.
Let's see, let's clip off like a full inch of the prop. <laughs> All right, so that's how much we clipped off and let's see how it flies. Now with at least a full inch off the prop, things start to get interesting. The white is exhibiting massive jello and vibrations. The video is pretty much unusable, but on the black, the hyper smooth is killing it. You have to view the video at full screen to see any vibrations, but the footage is still phenomenal. Considering one of the props is missing a half inch, that quad must be vibrating like crazy. So with that fly, I can definitely tell that there's vibrations because I could see it in my goggles and I can definitely hear it. Um, I have no idea what the video looks like, but let's go ahead and uh, just clip off some more and see what happens. <laughs> let's see. So maybe we'll just cut off like half the prop. Let's just cut off half the prop and see what happens. Alright, so that's what it looks like. <laughs> All right, so it looks like cutting off half the prop on one of these tri blades is not gonna work because uh, it just wrecked my little GoPro mount thing. Interesting results. The 4K video on the black looks much better on the computer than actually on YouTube because in order to actually view it in 4K, I have to export it in 4K and this video was not exported in 4K. It was shot in 4K but exported at 1080 but even at 1080, you can tell the video on the black is much better than the white. As you can see in the footage, the hyper smooth is a real deal. In one of the tests, I cut off like half the prop, so that quad must have been vibrating like crazy, but this hyper smooth on the black handled it like a champ. The motors didn't even come down hot. Which one of these two would I recommend? I think it's a no brainer. I would definitely recommend the black. The white just doesn't seem like a $200 camera. I mean, the image is okay, stabilization's okay, but what really killed me is the only one single format that it shoots in. 1440, come on GoPro. If you're gonna give us one format, at least give us 1080, something that we're used to. Especially with so many action camera choices available today. I mean, something like a Show Me Yi, which is like 50 bucks, can shoot multiple formats. And then you got the square formats like the Runcam uh, S, and then the Foxier box that shoots 4K for under 200 bucks. I wouldn't even recommend the white for someone who's looking for a camera to strap on the race quad just to get some race footage. There's so many options out there right now. You could get a much cheaper camera and probably give you this similar image. So at 400 bucks, the black is an expensive camera, but if you're someone looking for the best possible video, the black is the one to get. And we didn't even mention features like live streaming, super photo. Super photo is like a built-in HDR function on the photos. And then you got uh, the time warp videos too. No on the white, yes on the black. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you found this video helpful, it really helped me out if you gave me a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.